As I walked towards my desk, several guys in the office tried to engage me in conversation. I'm not a big talker, but not participating in typical office conversations is sometimes more costly than spending a few minutes on them. I also didn't want to be seen as the only one in the office with a stick up my ass, so I joined. Hey Tyler, are you excited about the ritual? Asked Perry Joseph, one of my few close friends at the design firm where I worked. Probably, I said calmly. Yeah, I think the thought of another guy having your wife really discourages you from marrying people, he said. Bullshit, Kramer snorted. Kramer, whose last name was also Joseph, was not related to Perry. I'm married and I like the ritual. I love both the spring ritual and the fall ritual. These are the best damn times of the year. Damn, for a guy as ugly as you, Whitford Bradley chimed in from across the room, those are probably the only two times you can have sex, married or not. I used the laughter that followed to escape the conversation and get back to work. The real truth is that I hated what was about to happen that Saturday night. I've always hated it. I saw the spring ritual and the fall rite as the worst examples of how far we as a society have fallen. It started at the beginning of the century. In 2015, which has become synonymous with strange changes, the divorce rate in America finally exceeded the 50% threshold. This was very bad because it meant that marriage in our country was less than a gamble. This meant that the chances of a successful marriage were less than one in two. People simply stopped getting married altogether. This led to a decrease in the number of families and a decrease in the number of children being born, and overall morale also declined sharply. Nobody gave a damn about anything anymore. America became a place where people spent millions of dollars to maintain a perfect online image, but they didn't actually look like their carefully crafted social media profiles. The woman who appeared to be the epitome of virtue online could actually be a pleasure on the street. People paid far more money to be photographed wearing famous designer clothes so they could post them on their Facebook page than the items themselves were worth. It didn't matter that they didn't actually own these things, as long as they were seen wearing them. Congress took a serious look at marriage. Several prominent scientists and committees received huge fees to conduct research that detailed the factors responsible for the breakdown of family and morality. It all came down to one three-letter word, sex. Hormonally induced sexual desire was the main reason why many couples entered into relationships. Pleasant, regular sex kept them together and produced children, Sexual indifference led to a loss of interest in both sex and relationships. This also led to infidelity and divorce. Congress mulled this over and asked for proposals for solutions. It took a while, but 20 years ago, in 2020, we first started the rituals. The term ritual comes from a pagan rite, the Great Ritual, and bears no resemblance to any pagan rite or fertility ritual of any religion or society before us. Rituals are more like a correction or balancing maneuver than anything else. It's like the difference between our calendar and the true solar cycle. Since our calendar lags by a few hours every year, every fourth year we have to add a day. Rituals compensate for the fact that most people are simply not honest, moral people, no matter how many rules or laws we pass. So twice a year we let them become morally ambiguous when it comes to sex. The ritual prevents them from committing crimes, but it does allow all adults to experience a world of savagery when it comes to sex. Sex with minors is still prohibited and is punished very strictly, including the death penalty, but almost everything else is allowed. Over time, the process has been refined to the point where it is fair and equitable and works for almost everyone. As with everything, there are of course some people who are against it, but after 20 years we have all accepted it. Why does a supposedly enlightened society accept and condone what is essentially public perversion twice a year? The answer is simple. The only answer necessary is that it works. And it actually works much better than expected. In fact, over the 20 years of the ritual's existence, the divorce rate has dropped to the point where last year the divorce rate among married couples was only 13%. Now divorce has become a shame again. People look at divorced men and women as losers. 
they are also required to list their status on any social media as divorced so that any possible future partners, both personal and professional, know in advance that this person is unlikely to be able to maintain a partnership. Many of the things that used to destroy marriages, if not completely eliminated, were at least weakened by the ritual. Remember those cases when a man married a woman or vice versa, but secretly or simply unintentionally hid his same-sex attraction. It doesn't matter now. Because of the ritual, the closeted gay person can make the marriage work because twice a year he or she can go out and fly his freak flag without any consequences to the marriage upon returning on Sunday morning. Remember those women or men who sought sex outside of marriage because their partners, no matter how much they love them, lack the ability or desire to meet their needs. Now it doesn't matter because these men or women can go out and be the biggest spoilers on the planet twice a year and go home the same night or the next morning without damaging their marriages. With the ability to legally walk out of a marriage and do whatever you want a couple of times a year, most people can create marriages that would seem like a death sentence and still thrive. As marriage survival rates increase, more marriages produce children and the family unit becomes stronger and more connected. Society as a whole benefited from the increase in morality. Perhaps it was ritual that saved America. Of course, nothing is perfect, and the ritual has spawned entire industries of specialists and companies that deal with the consequences of the few problems it brought. Several laws were introduced or strengthened. However, there will always be some people who simply believe that the ritual, despite all the benefits it brings to society, is wrong. I guess I'm one of those. As I stared at my computer screen, I tried to push all thoughts of the ritual out of my mind. I was working on a computerized multi-port multi-stage nitrous oxide injection system. One of the problems with modern cars is the lack of power when overtaking. With the exception of the late 60s, which preceded the oil crisis of the mid-70s, and of course my favorite time, the mid-2000s until 2015, the government and cowards everywhere waged a campaign to destroy the car. In the late 60s, the era of classic muscle cars, automakers were at war. They released one car after another to gain dominance among the car-loving population. The Camaro, Challenger, Charger, GTO, Firebird, Barracuda, Roadrunner, Electra 225, which was of course called the Dozen on the Streets, were all highly prized and lay claim to the crown worn by everyone's favorite pony car, the Mustang. Performance was the driving force behind all these machines. The funny thing about all of this was that the formula worked. These weren't luxury cars, they weren't stuffed with thousands of dollars wasted on decorations and crap. These were naked street rockets. They simply took a small car and put a big rear engine in it and watched them fly out of showrooms and onto the roads. The only thing that stopped the muscle car era was the oil embargo. Literally overnight, this all stopped as Mr. and Mrs. America decided that with rapidly rising gas prices, a huge engine getting 10-12 mpg wasn't a good idea. Ford practically castrated its show pony, releasing an almost restyled Pinto and calling it Mustang Roman II. I still shudder when I see one of these things in a car museum. Ford pulled its head out of its ass in the early 80s when it started producing Fox-based Mustangs and started chasing performance again. But muscle cars were no longer selling, and Ford had to go it alone as most of their competitors disappeared. Charger, Challenger, Camaro are all gone. Only the Mustang remained, and every year it became more powerful. There were special editions and variants, but they always remained on the fringes of the mainstream, which seemed to favor boring foreign economy cars. Then in 2005, when many thought the muscle car era was over, when many expected Ford to simply bury the Mustang like so many of their competitors had done by trying to copy Europe, Ford said, fuck it. They released a Mustang that looked like a Mustang, and with that one shot, they started the war all over again. GM and Chrysler quickly re-established their barricades behind similar versions from the past. For a decade, high-tech retro versions of muscle cars with absurd amounts of horsepower ruled the streets. This was my favorite time. While everyone was complaining about making the planet green, 
Ford and Carroll Shelby were producing monster Mustangs with up to a thousand horsepower or more. Ford started the war and Ford ended it. The 2015 Mustang, with its four-cylinder EcoBoost engine, was more like a Mustang. They could well be called Mustang Roman II Jr. Today, the typical city car boasts a one- or two-cylinder turbocharged engine that typically produces the equivalent power of a 20-year-old lawn mower. With government standards requiring at least 75 mpg, these cars struggle to maintain the 45 mph speed standard on highways. When we think back to the turn of the century, when cars were speeding down highways at 70 miles per hour, and all the horrors that crashes at that speed caused, it's amazing that anyone survived at all. At least that's what we're told. I still drive my classic car. This is a 2013 Boss 302. My car is midnight blue with white hockey stick stripes on the sides. The car is 27 years old and only has 150,000 miles on it. There's only so little on it because I don't drive it in the winter or when it rains. My uncle bought the car brand new and treated it like a child. When he died, he left it to me, and I continue to take good care of the car. My wrist vibrates, signaling an incoming call. I look at my Apple iWatch and see that my wife Delphine is calling. I don't really have time to talk to her, but since she or anyone else can access any camera in the world, I put on a fake smile and answer. I press my thumb to my ear and my little finger to my mouth. Apple technology does the rest. Bone conduction turns my thumb into a speaker of sorts and my little finger into a microphone, both of which transmit signals to and from the Apple iWatch. Hi, Fina, I say, trying my best to show at least some joy. Hello, darling, she replies cheerfully. Sometimes I can't understand how sincere her joy is when talking to me or whether she is acting the same as I am. Is there anything special you want for dinner? She asks. I can't think of anything, I answer. Okay, just checking, she says. I hear the smile in her voice. Honestly, whether she's actually happy or just laughing at me, I really can't tell. Hey, I thought I threw away that shirt, she says. And anyway, I'm sure I told you not to wear it anymore. Are you watching me again? I ask. Of course, she answers. I love you, Tyler. I need to look at you every chance I get. You really should get used to it. We've been married 18 years, so I'm sure you know everything there is to know about me. Mm. I answer, distracted by looking at the 3D drawing on my holographic screen. I really know everything there is to know about Delphine, including some things she thinks I don't know. For example, I know that she is cheating on me. This is the reason why it gets so damn fun twice a year. And I know everything about you, she suddenly exclaims. I hope we can always be this happy, Tyler. And I know we will. There is no other person on the planet that I love as much as you. I laughed then. I thought that she couldn't know everything about me. If I had, I would have realized that I was quietly gathering all the information and facts I needed to begin the divorce process. Tyler, you're smiling, she purrs. Maybe we'll skip dinner tonight, she says. Maybe we can go straight to the main event. Bye, darling, don't work too hard. Two hours later, I'm on the highway. I slip between cars like a shark among flounders. My boss, with its side stripes, stands out among the endless parade of smart cars. Almost all cars look the same. The only real differences between them are the colors, the comfort of the interiors, and the number of applications. There are, of course, some differences in what I call low-power engines. Some of the cars are completely electric. Some are fuel cells. Some are hybrids of one type or another, and some have very small gasoline engines. Most cars have that plodding top speed of 45 mph. Here, however, there are several sports cars that can reach 50. My boss can reach speeds of over 150 miles per hour even now, which is not only illegal, but a criminal offense. Professional NASCAR drivers don't exceed 70 mph, and they do it on the track. Maybe that's why no one watches the races anymore. The kids now call it NAPCAR. Suddenly, the display on the dashboard of my car lights up red. I take my foot off the gas, slowing the car to 45 mph. 
The built-in radar, laser, and photon detector tell me that I've been hit by three tracking lasers, but none have worked. The beams were reflected by several nearby smart machines before reaching me. Much of this is due to the fact that my car is much lower than the cars around it. I check all my mirrors and finally spot the robotic police car. She maneuvers between the cars until she is next to me. I turn on my turn signal and all the smart cars around me give way. They are controlled by computers, so they automatically change lanes to allow me to pull over to the side of the road. Hello, sir or madam. What's the situation? The robotic police car says through my car audio system. I stopped you on this beautiful sunny, rainy, hot or cold day to inform you that your vehicle emits much more tailpipe emissions and noise than is considered normal for a vehicle, especially with one occupant. We must do our part, sir or madam, to ensure the fitness of the planet for future generations, right? I felt like I was talking to a damn toaster. My car is an antique collectible, I said into the phone. Check my license plate against the registry, I added politely, while pointing my middle finger exactly where the driver would be if he were there. Oh yes, sir or madam, what is the case? You are right. I should have scanned this. This situation will now be taken into account in future meetings. I wish you a nice day and a pleasant ride. Oh my God, I thought. I was going over a hundred miles an hour and a cop pulled me over because of my exhaust system. This has been one of the problems with technology companies. In the early days, there were so many different companies competing for contracts. By the beginning of the 21st century, only Apple and Android remained in terms of phones. Apple won by simply buying Android. To avoid a monopoly, Apple kept Android alive. All good ideas simply became the Apple brand, and all the stupid ones became Android. It was the same with consumer electronics. Government electronics was entirely Microsoft. They kept releasing crap software with lots of bugs whenever they wanted and forcing it on everyone. I waited until the police car drove away and then continued driving home. I kept my speed under 80 to be safe. As I drove up to my house, I again noticed how all the houses in our neighborhood fit harmoniously into the landscape. They are all painted in earth tones and surrounded by what I think are fake trees. All trees are genetically modified to prevent them from growing taller than about 15 feet. So they produce a lot of clean air and filter out noise and pollution, but also don't block the sun's rays from our solar panels. When I walk into the house, Delphine comes up to me and hugs me as if I had been gone for six weeks rather than the usual six-hour workday. You're late, she said. I was stopped by a policeman, I explained to her. Have you driven that gluttonous, smoking monster you call a car again? She asked, smiling. Yes, I answered. She hugged me and kissed me tenderly on the lips. Then you probably should have expected it, she said. Please tell me you weren't speeding again. They didn't catch me, I said. She looked shocked. This thing doesn't have inertial dampers, she said. There are only those belts that cut into you and the gas bags. Airbags, I corrected her. Don't they stop you by exploding in your face? She asked. I nodded. Well, I guess so, I said. Well, air doesn't explode, she said. I don't know what they thought then. Everything in that era was so cruel. We spent the evening talking as usual and settled down on the sofa to watch TV. We both thought we might have seen our daughter flash into the house and disappear into her room and then come back out wearing different clothes, but we weren't sure. Heidi, if it was her, rarely spent much time with us except to tell us she loved us and ask for money in one breath. Delphine slowly moved closer to me and then next to me. She settled under my arm and began to breathe on my neck. She looked at me with her sparkling eyes and waited for me to make a move. I turned and looked into her eyes. She blinked her huge eyes and smiled at me. You understand that you don't need to be nervous, right? She smiled. I mean, it's not like college or when you were young. You don't need to plan anything. You can do whatever you want with me. You have a 99-999% chance of getting. She paused, choosing her words. Well, you know, it's just. I started. Maybe we should wait until after the ritual. 
But why? She asked, clearly upset. What the hell does ritual have to do with us? This is just some bullshit that the government came up with to reduce the divorce rate. Tomorrow night you will go and sleep with some random woman. I'll sleep with some random man. Ten minutes after this, we will go home and forget about it. This means nothing. We went through this even before we got married. It never changed how I feel about you. She was clearly angry. Do you regret marrying me? She asked. Does this mean anything? Of course not, I muttered. It was easy to say because it was the truth. I married you because I loved you. I know that many people get married for the sake of the fact of marriage and the stability that it implies. And some marry for tax breaks or career benefits. But I married you because I loved you and wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. And I love you too, and we will be together, she said softly. I kept my face still, hoping she couldn't read my thoughts. I just don't understand why this is happening. Everyone over 18 years of age must participate in the ritual. Can you imagine how difficult this is for non-traditional relationships? I'm sure there is some kind of system for them too, but damn, what if there wasn't? Her beautiful face was distorted by an ironic smile. My point is, dear, that we cannot allow what happens legally two nights a year to ruin the other 363 days. The ritual has nothing to do with us. I have an idea this time. Let's just go as quickly as possible, do our duty to society. Let's just do this and come back here to do our duty to each other. We'll take a long, hot bath together, wash away all traces of what happened, and then make slow, sensual love. Let's let the ritual be our warm-up. God, how I wanted to believe her. My heart was pounding in my chest, and I felt like she really meant it and believed it. But all the evidence I had told me a different story. When I woke up the next morning, I watched her sleeping figure next to me. Her body was almost too magical to exist. She was a tall, slender woman with curves that seemed impossible. And they really were impossible. Her breasts were shaped using a new biosynthetic material. They were nothing like the implants of the past. The material could change size and density under the influence of the tablets. In the old days, women got implants that looked great in their 20s and 30s, but which either had to be removed when they got older or looked really stupid. I'm still searching the internet for photos of women in their 50s and 60s with obviously fake breasts that stick straight out of their chests with no sign of sagging, while the rest of their body looks like the body of a 60-year-old woman. Or those photos where women have almost Kardashian-sized butts while the rest of their body is wrinkled and skinny. They start to look like a smart car driving a semi-trailer. But now, if you want your implants to shrink a little, you take a pill. If you're not as toned as you used to be and you don't want two huge, firm breasts on your chest that feel out of place, you take a pill and the density of the foam in your breasts becomes softer and they actually seem saggy. So Delphine's large, soft breasts were just the right size and shape for a woman our age. Her long, slender legs, which always seemed to wrap around me no matter where we were, are probably one of my favorite parts of her body, and they are completely natural. As I watched the rise and fall of her chest and the peaceful, carefree expression on her face, I started thinking again. What are you looking at? She asked when her eyes suddenly opened. I didn't look, I muttered. She immediately reached out to me. I've been awake for a while now, she said, smiling. I just looked at you with my eyes barely open, so that they seemed closed. You just sat there and looked at me like you liked me or something. I always thought of you as a work of art, I said quietly. I think if I had the opportunity, I would look at you forever. She slapped my leg and laughed. This is not a museum, fool, she said. And if I were a work of art, you would own a museum. You don't have to just look at me. You can take me off the wall and touch me, kiss me, and have sex with art any time you want, you know? If it were up to art, we would do it a lot more often, the same way we did it before. I nodded, but it wasn't what I was thinking. I thought, yeah, that's how we did it before I knew. Let's go for breakfast, she suddenly suggested. I want to spend the morning, what's left of it, in a cute dress, walking arm in arm with my handsome husband. 
I had no plans for the day, so we went to breakfast at a restaurant that was our favorite. They served real meat, not processed meat. The only downside was the prices. Of course, after you left there, you had to take at least two fat-burning pills, otherwise you would definitely gain weight. We then wandered along the promenade, looking into small shops, holding hands and exchanging little kisses from time to time. On such days, constant touching served only as foreplay, and we returned home to have sex. Looks like I wasn't the only one who had this idea. I felt Delphine's hand slide down the front of my pants several times as we looked at clothes in one of the small shops. Do you want to do this? She whispered. I looked at her. If not here, then we can go home, she said. Your daughter probably already got up and left with her friends. We will have the whole house to ourselves. Don't you remember what day it is today? I asked. She turned around and angrily walked out of the store, leaving me standing there alone. I also left the store and followed her, giving her the opportunity to let off steam. As soon as we were far enough away from shops and other people, she came at me with all her weapons. Do you understand how happy we are? She hissed. You have a job where you earn much more than enough for our needs. This is a blessing. I don't need to work. This is also a blessing. We have a beautiful home and a daughter who loves us both. My eyes narrowed slightly when she said that because it made me think about something I hadn't thought about before. I thought I was quite cunning, but she noticed it and her eyes questioned it. In short, Tyler Stevens, we have an almost perfect life. We don't need anything. Even after all these years, I love you just as much as I did on our wedding day, and... She trailed off as my eyes narrowed again. I was obviously neither the actor nor the liar I thought I was. She seemed to sense every lie and doubt I felt or expressed. Darling, don't let what we can't control ruin our lives. Standing in front of you is a woman who will literally do anything for you. You are the best part of my life, and I know that you love me too. Why should we allow the ritual to destroy us? She asked. It's not like he's going to disappear anytime soon. Can I tell you something? I don't like it either. I hate the thought of you going out there and having sex with some random woman, especially in moments like this when you are not studying with me. When I remember how painful it was for me to walk because you couldn't get enough of me, and I loved you so much that I just couldn't say no to you, I just shook my head. I want you now even more than then. I was younger then and loved sex, but now I crave it, and you haven't gotten old enough to start slowing down yet, she said. Is it me? Are you just tired of me? Am I no longer attractive? Do you want me to be taller or shorter, thinner? Are my breasts not big enough? Are they too big? Do you want me to change my hair color or length? She asked. I shook my head. If I chose a wife, you would be her, I said. Then what is it? She asked. I don't know, I said. This is probably a ritual and... How? She interrupted. Explain this to me once and for all. How does ritual affect us? What the hell does ritual have to do with us? I'm getting older, I said. Bullshit, she snorted. You run marathons. You're in better shape than a lot of guys in their 20s. But my testosterone levels are much lower, I said. So in order to perform well, I need to, you know, accumulate it. Her loud laugh was loud enough to make passers-by on the street turn to look at her. Oh my God, she laughed as she took my hand again. You don't have to worry about anything. And even if it were, she said, to hell with the ritual. This has nothing to do with us. How often should I repeat this? So if you go and meet some woman and you just can't do it for her, that's her hard luck, isn't it? You won't have to see her again. You have to worry about being ready for me. I can't believe you turned down sex with your own wife twice to save yourself up for some stranger. She laughed again and then led me behind a tree, grabbing my hand and pulling me along with her. As soon as we were sheltered from prying eyes, she grabbed me through my pants. This belongs to me, she said. We returned home, and, as she suspected, our daughter was not home. This bothered me, but Delphine was happy about it. Okay, we're sticking to the plan we made last night, she said. We go and find the first person we come across, have meaningless sex with him, 
and then come home and light a fire for each other. I know you don't want to do anything right now, but just lie with me and make me feel loved. Give me something to remind me of what I'll come back to. That's what we did. We lay down in our bed and hugged each other. She placed my hands on her big soft breasts and rubbed her perfectly sculpted ass against me. I was very excited until I remembered what she would be doing in less than an hour. When it started to get dark, we got out of bed. There were already screams in the street as some began to have sex in the streets. I got dressed and took my badge from my desk. These badges were issued by the government and contained a barcode that transmitted information to computers that tracked him. Each man received a badge. He passed it on to the woman he had sex with. The women turned in their badges when they were done and society moved forward. I hated this whole system. I have seriously thought about moving to Canada more than once. Canada did not have the ritual, and they refused to extradite people prosecuted for violating it. From where I lived in Michigan, Canada was just a bridge across. Delphine smiled at me and then came back and hugged me again. I stood like a statue. I didn't move away from her, but I didn't return the hug either. Have fun, I said sarcastically. What does it mean? She asked, looking at me. I just turned away from her. I really didn't know what to do. It didn't go as usual. I got into the car, hoping that the loud exhaust system and the fact that the car was neither eco-friendly nor fuel-efficient would deter most of the self-conscious women I encountered. I drove along, watching as people approached each other and united throughout the city. I even saw people having sex on the streets. There were some very unusual sights. I saw an obviously rich, upper-class woman having sex with a homeless man. She seemed to be enjoying every second of it. I also saw one young woman who was servicing three men at the same time. I was wondering how they handle badges and whether she gets three badges or just one. An hour later, Women were knocking on my car windows every time I stopped. I didn't know what to do. I took the freeway and left town. It wasn't like what I usually did. About ten miles out of town, I stopped seeing people stopping on the side of the road to have sex with other drivers. I pulled into the rest stop to collect my thoughts. I got out of the car, hoping that if someone came in here, they would think that I was already with someone. This night was one of the safest nights of the year. Any crimes committed during the ritual, even simple assault or theft, were punishable by death. I went into the building and into one of the cabins where travelers could take a nap before continuing on. I hid there in the dark from all the chaos that was breaking out back in the city. As I sat there alone with my thoughts, my watch vibrated. I switched them to holographic mode and the display appeared right in front of me. My private investigator told me he had the information I needed. Not that I needed more. I played the edited video he sent me. The video showed Delphine leaving our house and driving to a motel a few miles away. She walked straight into one of the rooms on the first floor. It's amazing that she immediately knew where to go. My detective obtained footage from inside the room where my wife was undressing in front of a man who was already naked. I missed you, Jean, she said. It's been six months, he replied and he really seemed to miss her because he grabbed her and started kneading her breasts. He threw her roughly onto the bed. Did you do it? he asked. Sorry, she said. He didn't want to. Maybe next time. Damn, he said. I wanted it so bad. It made you seem so promiscuous, coming to me right after sex with your husband. Are you going to have sex with me or talk yourself to death? She interrupted him. He walked up to her and rushed at her. He turned her over and tried to have sex with her in a different position, but she turned to him and said, No. He looked at her angrily. We can't do that this time, she said. I need to go home and make him think I saved something just for him. He's been acting very strange lately. Does he still do that? The guy asked. Damn, he's just like my wife. You should never have married that guy. As far as I remember, she said, you had no interest in getting married. So I did what I had to do. Well, it took me a while to understand, he said. Honestly, I don't care about this guy or what he wants. You are mine and you must remember that. 
So you're turning me down for him, he asked. I only see you twice a year, but he can have you whenever he wants. How is that fair? Those are the rules, she said. Something in her face changed. Okay, he said. She looked at her watch. What? he asked. Jin, we've been here for almost an hour. He's probably already home and wondering where I am. It's really time for me to leave, she said. You can leave if you want, he said. I can always go home and have sex with my wife. But if you walk out of this door, it will be our last time. Do you want this? No, she answered quickly. They started making love. I turned off the screen and just sat in the dark as tears rolled down my cheeks. I couldn't cry in public or even at home if someone was nearby, but I needed to let it out. I quietly sobbed for a long time. I cried because I really loved Delphine, but I couldn't go on. This isn't the first time I've caught them together, but it's the first time I finally had proof that I needed to get this bitch out of my life. After 18 years of marriage, it will be hard, but it is necessary. There are many questions left to answer, but it won't be difficult. I was so absorbed in myself and my sad story that I didn't notice that I wasn't alone. The hand hugged me and then suddenly stopped. Sorry, I just heard sobbing and thought you. I mean, men don't usually cry, she said. Why are you hiding here alone and not coming out to drag some willing woman here by the hair, she asked. It was good. This let me know that she had not seen my video. She probably came in right after I started crying like a loser. It looks like we're both hiding from something, she said. For some reason, I thought that the nod of my head would be visible to her. Since we'll never see each other again, maybe we can help each other. You know, stranger therapy, you tell me your story and I'll tell you mine. We don't know each other, so we have no reason to lie. We can be completely honest with each other and express our opinions. Who knows, maybe we can see something that the other doesn't see. Somehow she felt my nod again. I'll start, she said. I'm hiding here because I hate the ritual. I started laughing hysterically. We have more in common than you thought, I interjected. No, she said. In my case, it's much worse. I think I grew up with fairy tales, and that's what I want. I think I'm beautiful, but I never found the right guy. I think it's more about my personality than anything else. My views are kind of contradictory. On the one hand, I really believe that ritual is another form of sexism. It's just another way for men to control women. I want to have complete control over myself and my body. Makes me a feminist, but not really. She sighed. Most women who are known for their feminist views support the ritual. They support it because they think it's normal for every woman to go out and have sex with strange men, instead of being tied to their husbands, families, and jobs. They look at marriage as some kind of prison and see in the ritual a way for a woman to spit in the face of her husband and tell him that he is not her master. What confuses me is that although I want to control my destiny, all I really want is the power to choose the man I give myself to. I want to get married. I want a husband who will marry me because loves me. Not for financial reasons or political reasons or any other reason. I just hate that I have to go out and offer myself to some stranger and have sex with him or pay a huge fine or go to jail. She sighed again. Listening to her speak was calming. The sound of her voice calmed me. She had a slight accent. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it was definitely Southern. I read articles about some methods that girls use in same-sex relationships if they absolutely cannot bring themselves to have sex with a man. I decided to try some of them. I thought the easiest way was to find a homeless person, get him drunk, and take him from me. I spent 50 bucks on a guy before I found out he had already slept with some girl and gave away his badge. The bastard kept talking about it like he had the token in his pocket. I laughed when she said that. Then I told my story. She was shocked. What a stupid bitch, she whistled. You know it's illegal, right? She, he, they could get in big trouble. They'll have to go to jail if you can prove it. I can, I said. I'll try to get her to give me a divorce. But it will also ruin your career, she said. No one really cares who was at fault in the divorce. 
both parties are usually considered losers. It's not like this everywhere, I said, and really, I just want to get out. If people look down on me because I got rid of the cheater, then I don't need people like that. My friends know me and know what I'm like. Besides, who said that I would like to get married again someday? You're obviously a good guy, she said. From the way you described your marriage and the way you talked about her, any woman would be happy to have you. I would not get a divorce, although what you said is good, but society today treats divorced people with contempt. If you really have evidence, put them in jail. Many prosecutors are trying to please the government. They like to do cases related to the ritual. You could put them in jail for so long that it would be like a divorce. By the time they get out, they'll be too old to give you any trouble, and maybe by then things will have changed. That's an interesting thought, I said. Thank you. If only my problem could be solved as easily, she said. Your task is much simpler, I said. Here's your badge. Do I need to get naked or will it be quick? She asked without enthusiasm. What do you mean? I asked. You gave me your badge, she said. We should have sex. We just had sex, I said. Well, it was oral okay, it was verbal sex. One of the synonyms for conversation is intimate, right? She reached out in the darkness and hugged me. Then she stood up and opened the door. When the door opened, we were both surprised to see that it was starting to get light. You really saved my ass, she said. I have just enough time to turn this in. I could lose my job or I owe you one. Then she left. I smiled and thought of Pat Benatar's classic song, Promises in the Dark. It's easy to find yourself in debt to someone you can never find and whose name you don't know. This is especially easy when they don't know anything about you either. I walked slowly back to my Mustang, full of new ideas. I can't say I was happy. In some ways, I felt worse than ever. But at least now, after talking with whoever it was, I didn't feel completely hopeless. I saw the light at the end of the tunnel, and perhaps that light was not the headlights of an approaching train. When I drove home, I had no worries. I really focused on driving and enjoyed driving my car for the first time in a very long time. In fact, when I walked through the door of my house, I was humming. My humming suddenly stopped mid-sentence when I noticed that Delphine was looking at me angrily. Where the hell have you been? She demanded to know. The ritual, remember? I said. We had plans, remember? She whistled even more angrily. You were supposed to just meet someone, sleep with her, and then drag your ass home and forget about it. We were supposed to make each other forget we had sex. With some damn strangers, remember? She stood up and walked over to me. I don't remember anything about you going out and meeting some bitch and spending the whole night with her. You never did that before. And now you're coming back packed to the house and humming. You're happy as a pig in shit and I spent the whole damn night waiting for you and worrying about you. She must have been really special. I just shook my head then. Delphine, I just want to take a shower and go to bed, I said. Maybe we can talk about this later. I'm very tired and my bibsa is full. What you are is over, she spat. For more than a week, I practically ran after you. You didn't touch me. Five, I said but you can go and meet some stranger and spend the whole night having sex with her and then expect me not to talk about it. You must be. Four, I said, when she looked at me curiously. So, let me guess, she continued. You met some hot 20-year-old girl. She made you feel young again and you. Three, I said with all the tension and some anger in my voice. You know that everything that little bitch did for you, I can do too if you give me a chance she said angrily. Two, I spat through clenched teeth. What are you even counting on? She shouted. Is this the number of times you had her? Delphine, I told you my bibsa is full, I said calmly. What's yours? She asked. My built-in bullshit absorber, I said. He takes in all the bullshit people spew at me and absorbs it. When it gets full, I can't take any more nonsense and I explode. Very funny, she said. I think I get it now. You were drunk. It makes sense. So how many times have you had sex with her while your wife, 
the mother of your child, was at home waiting for you. Let me start by answering your stupid question, I said. You asked how many times I slept with her. No one, just like every other time, Delphine. I haven't gone out or had sex with anyone since we first got married. Until tonight, I loved you too much. I just couldn't do it. It's a shame you don't feel the same. Her eyes became huge. I usually just give my mark to our daughter so she doesn't have to have sex with a stranger. I'm just trading tags with one of the guys at work. This time I didn't have the opportunity to do that. I learned your tag switching trick, Delphine. Honey, I don't know what you mean, she said. Sorry, I was just worried and... And don't try to walk away from this now, bitch, I screamed. Her face turned ashen. While we're asking questions, what did you do tonight? I asked. Well, I didn't want to break the law, so I just found some guy and... She began. What was his name? I asked. How should I know? She asked. He was just a guy and it ended pretty quickly and I came home to you. She continued to look between me and the floor and for several minutes, which seemed like hours, no one said a word. I tried, I said. But there's no point in talking to you. You are simply incapable of telling the truth. What? What do you mean, honey? She asked. Delphine always remembers that I loved you with all my heart and that you are responsible for what happened to us, I said. Tyler, you sound crazy, she said. There's a difference between crazy and stupid, I said. I was stupid, but not anymore. You can stop lying, Delphine, and we can figure out our next move. I really want a divorce, but if I can't get it, I'll agree to you and Jean going to jail. We're not getting divorced, Tyler, she said. I love you, there's no need for that. Then she looked at me strangely. What do you mean I'm going to jail? Who the hell is Jean? She asked. Delphine, why the hell did I ever love you? You can't tell the truth even when your ass is on the line. Forget it, we'll just do it through the lawyers, I said. Wait, honey, she whined. I do not know what you're talking about. So you didn't know that the guy you had sex with for two hours today was your old boyfriend, Gene Simmons? This shocks the hell out of me. Okay, Tyler, I slept with Gene, but it didn't mean anything. It was just an accident that we ran into each other, and it was just sex that ended in 20 minutes, not two hours. You just cheated on me, I finished for her. It was a right, she exclaimed. Nonsense, I said. It's a novel. I don't even know how many times you slept with him. But this is the fourth time I have recorded it on video. I can also prove that you broke the law by arranging the meeting to make sure it wasn't an accident. Do I need to show you all the receipts for the room? I tapped my watch and a holographic video of her having sex with Jin popped up in the space between us. See the look on your face? I said. You're having fun. When you and him get out of prison, you'll have plenty of time to enjoy it even more. I'll have someone else by then, and maybe even more kids. Maybe we can all have a steam room together. Sex party, but damn, by the time you get out, we'll all be too old for sex and... No, Tyler, she screamed. It's not what you think. Please let me explain. Come on, explain why it's not enough for you two to just cheat on me. Explain why you have to humiliate me. I never intended to. She began. Tyler, I just let him. You just let him ruin our marriage, I said. No, darling, no, she said. I promise I will never see him again and I will do everything. It's too late for that, I said. I'm going to take a shower and get some sleep. I need you to get your things and leave. Until we sort out the divorce and decide who gets the house, I'm going to stay here. I've taken you off your bank accounts. Your credit cards are gone, are still working, but you can't use them to get cash or transfers. If you abuse them before we get this sorted out, I'll cut you off completely. I'm trying to be nice, but don't abuse it. No, Tyler, she said again. Please don't do this. Give me a chance. A chance to do what? I asked. A chance of hurting me even more? I don't see it. One last thing. I want a DNA test. For what? She asked. Because I can't trust you at all. I said. I heard, I said. 
I heard you mention being scared. How do I know that she is really my daughter? I mean, I feel like that's true, but you didn't force him to wear a condom, and I have no idea how long you two have been doing this over the course of your sleep, Noah. If she is not my daughter, I heard that the judges will either force this bastard to pay me back all the money I spent over the years, or add to both your amounts the number of years I supported her. Tyler, she's your daughter. I love you too much to do something like that, she cried. So you say, I told her. But we already know that I can't trust you. Get your shit together and leave when I wake up. I got up and took a shower. I tried my best to ignore the sounds I heard, and after a while I fell asleep. I woke up in the middle of the day. It was a bright sunny Sunday, and after brushing my teeth and not shaving, I got dressed and went downstairs. My daughter rushed through the kitchen and gave me a quick hug. Thanks, Dad, she said sarcastically. What have I done now? I asked. Mom is a clumsy person, she said. She's been crying all morning, so instead of going out and hanging out with friends, I'm stuck here taking care of your woman. She's not my woman anymore, I said. That's right, she said, stretching out the one-syllable word to three or four and expressing her disbelief with every syllable. I'm serious, I said. Like you were serious about the DNA test, she said. Sorry, honey, I said. But, Dad, stop talking to me like I'm an idiot, she said. You did it to hurt your mom because she hurt you. You asking for a DNA test is like saying she's an available girl. She's so emotionally upset right now that she can't think straight. So if she was thinking clearly, I began, what difference will it make? Dad, remember, every child in the state gets a DNA test in elementary school. I did this 15 years ago when I was five. I am your daughter. If you look at the office records, you'll see this. Don't you remember sitting on my lap and trying to explain it to me? And if that wasn't enough, mom has brown eyes. You have weird eyes just like me. Our eyes are blue with small gold flecks. Your grandfather also had these, remember? He called it a family trait. I nodded, and she smiled at me. Dad, I heard you and Mommy arguing this morning, she said. You really pushed her against the wall. You made her feel really bad. I understand. She hurt you, so you hurt her even more. Can you forgive her now? I said nothing. Dad, I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm already 20 years old. I didn't even need you to protect me from the ritual this year. I just went and did it quickly. It only took 20 minutes. I spend more time doing manicures. I don't believe it. I think it's stupid. But when you look back in history and see where the country was going, she trailed off. Dad, there were a lot of divorces when you were growing up, weren't there? She asked. I nodded again. Now they're almost gone, she said. I don't have any friends whose parents aren't together, so maybe the ritual isn't so bad. But this is different, I said. I know you think it's different, she said. Dad, I know how you feel. You don't believe in the ritual. You do everything you can to avoid it. You believe that marriage should be between two people who get married because they love each other and don't need no one else. I feel the same. But Dad, people are not perfect. We have desires and hormones and attraction all the time. Can you look me in the eye and tell me that since you and mom was together, have you ever looked at another woman? No, I can't, I said. So why do you expect mom to do anything differently, she asked. Because there's a difference between looking at someone and having sex, I said. Besides, if it was just a ritual, I wouldn't be upset with your mom at all. What your mom did goes beyond the ritual. It's cheating. I don't want to be married. On a woman I can't trust. Dad, she loves you so much, it's crazy. Dad, she loves you so much, it's crazy. What's wrong with it if she has sex with some random guy a couple of times a year? Guy, she asked. This is not some random guy, I said. This is her old boyfriend. It is with him that she has sex every time. Besides, it's illegal. I stopped. Honey, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. It's just weird to talk to your daughter about who her mother is having sex with, I said. Dad, our generation grew up on the right, she said. 
At school, we talked about sex and how it relates to the right. So I will have these discussions forever. Not with me, I said. Daddy, I love you both, she said, and I don't want my family to break up, and you should at least think a little about me. What I mean is that society views divorced people as failures. People just don't trust them. And I think that in some cases, children of divorced parents are also looked at a little askance. People act as if the fact that your parents got divorced means you are too. Sorry, Angel, I didn't think of it that way, I said. But there's really nothing I can do about it. Dad, in school we learned that if a couple is willing to sit down and listen to each other, they can usually work out almost anything. Maybe you two just need some advice. I'm sorry, honey, but I don't think this marriage can be saved, I said. But why not, she asked. Because only one of us wants to save him, Delphine said behind me. I think it only meant something to one of us. And that one of us wasn't you, damn it, I spat. Don't try to be a damn victim here, Mother Teresa. If you could have kept your fucking legs closed or even just followed the rules of the right, our marriage wouldn't have ended. And if you want it to last a long time. It's so damn bad you have a choice. What is it? She asked. I already told you, I said. You can go to prison and hope that in 20 or 30 years when you get out, my opinion will have changed. Tyler, can we sit down and just talk about this? She asked. I love you so much. Can I just explain to you how I feel about this and we can move on? I already told you that I'm willing to do everything in my power to fix this. I also told you that this won't happen again. Why the hell do I need to hear your feelings about this if you were never interested in mine? I asked. You could stop doing this at any time. If this marriage meant that much to you, hell, you could have saved it. Now it's too late. There is one thing you can do if you want. Call old man Gene and tell him. What will happen to him so he can hire a lawyer and we can move forward quickly and I still want you to get out of my house. But Tyler, I have nowhere to go, she whined. There are a lot of hotels and motels in town, I said. Your credit cards are working. But I would choose a cheaper place because everything you spend comes from your share of our assets. I'll sleep in the guest room, she said. If I'm not here, we won't even be able to try to solve this problem. Delphine, your presence will bring us even more harm. Every time I see you now, I feel nauseous and... Then her face changed. That's all, isn't it? She asked. That's why you were so distant and why we stopped having sex and... She just ran into my bedroom and slammed the door. I'll go get her, my daughter said. If you want, I said. That's not skin from my ass. Even though it was Sunday, I called several lawyers I knew. Divorce law was so specialized and so rare in this era that it took me a while to find out the name of the guy who did it. I emailed him and, surprisingly, received a response within a couple of hours. We talked about the specifics of the case, and having learned that he could not dissuade me, he agreed to take on my case. Then I decided to take the initiative. I called Jean. I kept the phone on speaker while I went through the records in our office, trying to gather all the documents the lawyer wanted. Simmons, he growled into the phone. And then he added, My name is Dr. Love. Stevens, I said back. But not Stevens, who you had sex with. Then I added, Dream on. There was nothing but dead air on the phone line. I'll stop, he said. This was just a joke. It was just sex. It didn't mean anything. It was a right. It was just a way to be lazy, you know. This way I didn't have to go out and look for someone. And Delphine has always been quite freedom-loving. You know what I mean. She was always a little slutty. You have no idea how much this has helped my marriage. Just between you and me, my wife. I love her very much, but she's not particularly excited in bed. But damn Delphine. She loves hard sex and will do anything, you know. What I know is that you have problems, Jean, I said. Look, Tyler, I already told you I'll stop. It's not that big of a deal, he said, trying to sound confident. It's really important, I replied. And since I'm divorcing her and naming you in the divorce suit, I thought you should know. 
I'm taking the high road here and trying to warn you. Come on, he said. You can't be serious. If this gets out, I might end up divorced too. It would ruin my life. I don't have a great job like you, and I might lose my wife. The one you just said was bad in bed, I asked. There is an alternative you can think of. I already told you I'll stop, he said. And I already told you it's too late for that, I replied. You can just go to jail, but that's up to Delphine. If she doesn't give me a divorce, I have evidence against both of you that proves that you conspired to circumvent the random nature of the ritual. I have your phone conversations before the event where you arranged for a hotel room, the room was paid for with one of my credit cards, so I even have a record of it, and it was made two days before the ritual. Come on, he begged. It's not fair. No one follows all the rules all the time. Just because you want to get back at your wife doesn't mean you have to ruin my damn life. What about my wife? What about my kids? It's really funny that you haven't thought about them until now, I said. Damn, I did it for them, he complained. That's the whole point of the ritual. It's an opportunity to get out and have fun, so you have an outlet for your base instincts or desire to do dirty things without it turning into resentment towards your wife and kids. It's just fun. It's like Halloween. You're just playing the part for the sake of it. Laughter. Well, I don't think it's funny, I said. Look, it's not my fault that your wife is slutty, he suddenly said sharply. That's why I never married her. She was a great friend, but she's just not the type of woman to marry or fall in love with. You can explain all this to the judge, I said. I would suggest you hire a lawyer. Wait, he pleaded. I can't really talk right now. Can we meet and discuss this face to face, maybe over a drink? There must be some way we can work this out. What if we work together? Maybe we can convince her to give you the divorce you want without involving me. Maybe we can even figure out a way to keep you from divorcing her without forcing me to go to jail. Think about it, it will hurt your reputation too. I gave him my address and told him to come at about six. I figured I'd finish washing the car by then. When I stood up and turned around, I noticed Delphine standing in the doorway. The pain on her face was unimaginable. I've seen Delphine cry before, and it always felt like a punch to the stomach. I always did my best to stop her tears. But this was worse. While I sat and talked to Jean, Delphine heard every word. She suddenly rushed towards me and fell into my arms, sobbing. I'm sorry you heard that, I said. Heartaches seem to be going on left and right. But you don't even understand, she said. Your heartache, no matter how real it may seem to you, is meaningless. What you heard was always just conversations between two people acting under the influence of their hormones. Maybe I like Stadisks with Jean Tyler, but I love making love to you. Can't you see the difference? I always begged you for sex after you started pulling away from me. Does it sound like I didn't like what we were doing? That sounds like guilt sex, I said. How can you be so stupid? She asked. Guilt sex happens after you've done something. I chased you every day. We've been married for 18 years. Doesn't that mean nothing to you? That means I've wasted more than 200 months of my life, I said. So, because of something stupid that only happened a few times, you want to throw away 20 years? She asked. I didn't throw them away, Delphine, I said. You did it. Tyler, what difference does it make if it was Jean I had sex with or just some random guy? She asked. If it was a random guy, you wouldn't remember him. It would just be a random event that didn't matter, and there wouldn't be any feelings. It's like you were having an affair with him. It was a planned deception with someone, someone you know. There are feelings between you and you like to talk about me in derogatory ways. Tyler, I've never said a single derogatory word about you, she said. You should listen to your records again or pull your head out of your ass. Mostly I was just telling him what he wanted to hear so he could get it over with and get home to you, fool. As for feelings, there weren't any. Part of why I, I feel so stupid now, it's because of what I thought was going on. What did you think was happening? I asked. 
you thought that a woman whose husband loved her with all his heart was having fun with another man, I thought so too. Tyler, you always saw me as I wanted to be, she said sadly. Before we met, I was a different person. I was a tall, skinny girl with no breasts or butt. There are girls like that everywhere. Throughout college, I was so desperate to get a man that I slept with a lot of guys. But none of them wanted me. They all wanted a piece of flesh, but didn't want to own the package it was in. I thought Gene would be different. He was from another city and didn't know about my reputation. We started dating and sleeping together. More than just one night. And sex with him was always pretty rough. I thought I loved him, so I got used to it, even started to like it. There's something to be said about just being dominated. Anyway, I started to think that maybe Jen would be the one. But after a year of our relationship, we started arguing a lot. We also stopped going out. He would just come to me and have sex with me. It took a while, but I found out that Gene heard from his friends about me. He didn't want to marry me. He didn't even want to be seen with me in public. I still hoped that over time he would change. But it didn't happen, and everything got worse. He even started beating me. But I still hoped. I endured it because I hoped that he would see something and start treating me the way he did in the beginning. Then I found out something that broke my heart. Jin just came and fucked me good. I was sick for a couple of days after that. In my head, it was flattering. I thought he just had so much desire for me that I lost control. It was Friday night. When I went out for breakfast on Saturday, I ran into our mutual friend. He looked at me as if surprised to see me. I would have thought you were getting ready, he said. Getting ready for what? I asked. Oh, yes, he said. I see that you don't want to go. I must have looked very confused, so he continued. Do you know that Jin is getting married today? He asked. I was invited, but I have to work. I'll go to the party. Honey, I was broken. He just used me as his personal bitch for over a year. I was good enough tossed to dissect, but not good enough to get married. Less than six months after that, I met him and we talked. He acted like I cheated on him by not telling him about the other guys I was with. So he decided that he had the right to hide things from me too. Tyler, I slept with several guys, but I only did it because I was looking for something. I wasn't looking for sex. I was looking for someone who would love me as much as I would love him. I wanted a man who would only be mine, and Jin turned out to be the wrong man. I was broken for a while, and then I met the most wonderful guy. He was a little shy, and I was not used to it. But there was something about him. In bed, I found heaven. I realized that he loved me. I really felt like he loved me as a person, and the sex was just a nice extra. Tyler, I fell in love with him before we even had sex, but to find out that he loves me too. It was like I swallowed a balloon, there was so much love in me that I almost burst. Tyler, we had a lot of sex. He does things to me that no one else does. He was the first one with whom I tried special sex, and then he completely ruined me. Of course I agreed, so the three of us could be together. He and I could raise our daughter together. He surprised me even more when he asked what I wanted most in life. We got married, and I never regretted it. I'm not perfect, Tyler, and you're not perfect either. I always felt like you were a little mad at me during the ritual. There were times when it took you days to touch me again. I finally realized that you were mad because I had to have sex with someone else. You love me so much that the thought of someone else touching me bothered you, even if it was legal. I cried because that's what I wanted. For someone to treat me. Tyler, the reason I laughed that night when you asked for a DNA test is because there is simply no way your daughter belongs to anyone else. Her birthday is in September, fool. That means she was conceived in late December or January. The ritual takes place in April and October. Except for the ritual, I have never slept with another man since I first saw you. I love you, fool. I have always been yours. As for Jin, I already told you, it only happened four or five times. Sorry, I really don't remember if it was four or five. I happened to meet him before the ritual the year before last, and we talked. 
he laid all the cards on the table and told me how he should have married me. I may have an evil side, but I wanted to rub his nose in what he had missed. So I told him about you, how successful you are in your career, and how much I love you and our daughter. I told him that he actually did me a favor by not marrying me. I think hearing about you and how successful you are and how you are twice as good as him really made him jealous of you. That's why he likes to put you down. You when we have sex. I loved rubbing it in his face. It was kind of my revenge for the way he treated me. But that wasn't enough, and a few weeks later when the ritual came around, I just happened to be there. He and I did it. As usual, I let him do what he wanted, and he really enjoyed it. My husband gets that's all he wants, whenever he wants, I told him. I liked rubbing it in his face. Six months later, I received a phone call. He got my number from some mutual friends. We agreed to meet again at the next ritual. I know this may seem counterintuitive to you, but there were many factors involved. On the one hand, I liked rubbing his nose in the fact that most of the year he either doesn't have sex or he has very boring sex with his wife. From what he says, they do it once a month, if at all. Letting him know that we do this almost every night. But there were other things. I thought it was less like perversion, dating someone I knew. I can honestly tell you that in the last two years I have only had sex with two men, instead of at least five if I did it casually and I'm trying to be honest with you, Tyler. In my own way, I enjoyed having sex with Gene. I mean, you saw it. He doesn't do anything better than you. He's just rougher. And not always, but sometimes I like it. And this is what the ritual is about. But there were no feelings there. Look at your notes again, dear. I spend hours looking into your eyes and kissing you. We become part of each other's soul. Have you ever seen me kiss him? That did not happen. It was just sex. I just wanted to finish and come home to you. But you spent the whole damn night outside the house. All I wanted was for the ritual to end so I could be naked with my husband. I hoped that after the ritual we could return to normal life. Why do you think I suggested that we just get rid of those we did the ritual with and go home to take a long, relaxing bath and end the night together? I love you, Tyler. There is no one else in my heart. Besides the fact that you were angry with me, the thing I'm most sorry for is hearing what Jin said. Like I told you, I really thought I was punishing him for not marrying me. But I see that he was just using me again. No matter what happens, he will never see beyond the bitch he thought I was when we met. I was faithful to you for twenty years, whether you like it or not. You love me, Tyler. I will do my best to make sure you always love me, no matter what I have to do. She looked at her Apple Watch. I think you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. I took my cue from you, darling. Have you finished getting ready? I asked. I haven't even started, she said. This really pissed me off because I was very clear with her. Before I could say anything, the doorbell rang. I went to open it and saw that it was Jin. He looked very nervous. He clearly didn't know what to expect. For a moment, I just looked at him. I realized that seeing him in person is very different from seeing him on video. Even the high-quality holographic video from my Apple Watch couldn't really show me the details I saw when standing in front of a real person. He was far from the monster I imagined. He wasn't even as big as me. I think I've outgrown it by two inches. He seemed as surprised as I was. He extended his hand to shake, and I just looked at him. He lowered his hand when he realized I wasn't going to shake it and rubbed it on his pants. Let's talk in the backyard, I suggested, leading him towards the exit to the terrace. I can't help but admit I looked around, looking for Delphine. I really wanted to see her reaction to him and vice versa. We sat at a small table on the terrace. First of all, I want to say that I'm sorry about all of this, he began. The more I think about it, the more uncomfortable I get. If I were you, I'd probably be as angry as you are. But I just don't see the need for stupid ideas. Only two people had seven lives destroyed. When I say seven people, I mean both families could be destroyed, and we have three children together. I guessed it, I said. Look, you told me that I have two options. I could be a party to your divorce, which would ruin my life, 
because the other party in case of infidelity is considered even worse than divorcees. It would cost me my job, and the consequences of that my marriage will be brought down on me. My second option is worse. I will end up in prison for breaking the rules of the ritual. This means that what I did will still be known, my career will still end, and I will probably still get divorced. Plus, I'll spend many years in prison. I don't like either of these options, so what if I pay you to leave me alone? I don't make a lot of money, but what if I give you $5,000 up front and a little every week from now on? Think about it, you can still divorce a bitch. I don't blame you, no one should be stuck. Before he could finish his sentence, I hit him in the mouth so hard that he fell back in his chair. I pounced on him and began to hit him so quickly that he did not have time to react. If I hadn't been pulled away from him, I probably would have killed him. I was still trying to get to him so I could hit him again when I realized that Delphine and the other woman had pulled me away from him. Jean, what have you done now? The woman asked in a very serious voice. Where will you get $5,000? The woman was huge, like an Amazon with a barrel-shaped body. She had a pretty face with an ugly expression as she looked at Jin the way a mother would look at a child who had just crapped himself on the kitchen floor. Her legs were like columns supporting a building, and she had a huge bubble butt. Strangely, her breasts were very small, almost flat, and barely stood out from her chest. Her entire behavior indicated that she was in command. I could imagine Jean having sex with her once or twice a year, and it would be on her terms. I could imagine not wanting to have sex with her at all. Perhaps that's why he had to be so persistent when he had sex during the ritual. He could pretend he was still in charge. It was almost like twice a year he regained his virility, and twice a year Delphine could be subdued. I just shook my head thinking about it. Jin just groaned in pain. Can you get me a towel, please? The woman asked Delphine. Delphine brought a warm, damp towel. Jin rose to his feet, and the woman sat him down in a chair. You'll have a couple of bruises and a swollen lip, she said without sympathy. But you'll survive. So what the hell is going on? I caught part of the conversation. Looks like you did something to this gentleman and are trying to buy your way out of jail. I explained the whole situation to her, and she became angrier by the second. Mr. P Stevens, do you actually have a video? Uh, do you know? she asked. Yes, I have, I said. This is a high-definition video. I also have an audio recording of their arrangement to meet. This violates the rules of the ritual and... I know, she said. They're facing at least 20 years. By the time they get out, we'll both have found someone else. Divorcing them while they're in prison will be very easy, and since they committed crimes, we can probably do it without much shame for us. It may even disappear if we get married quickly. I think it will not be a problem for both of us. Both Jean and Delphine froze in surprise. So which option do you prefer, Mr. Stevens? She asked. She looked into the purse that she brought with her and began to look for something there. She pulled out a device that looked like those male sex toys from the turn of the century. When she placed it on the table, a heavy sound was heard. It was obviously heavy and made of metal. I noticed Jin's face took on an expression of horror as she placed the device on the table. She looked at me. I told Delphine she could decide, I said. The woman laughed and shook her head. She turned to her husband. You won't get off that easy, she said. Put this on. Right here, he asked. Can't I wait until? Put it on right now, she said slowly, pronouncing each word separately. Jin stood up and pulled his pants down to his knees. Then he pulled down his panties. He took the item off the table and clipped it to his belt. The woman handed me a small remote control. Please stop, he shouted. His wife shrugged. Now this wire is heating up and burning him there. You can stop it by pressing the button again, she said in a completely indifferent voice. I pressed the button and Jin exhaled in relief, loud enough that I could feel the breeze. So what have you decided, Mrs. Stevens, she asked. I turned to look at Delphine. I'll probably go to jail, she said quietly. No, said Jin angrily. Before he could say anything else, 
His wife grabbed the remote on the table and pressed a button. Jin let out a high-pitched scream and began rolling around on the grass, hitting his groin with his hands. His wife looked at him for a moment and then turned off the device. A disgusting smell wafted on the wind, and it became clear that Jean had shit himself. He lay on the grass, rocking back and forth. That seems pretty cruel, the woman said to Delphine. I have no choice, Delphine said, tears rolling down her cheeks. I can't give him a divorce. I can't. I love him too much. As long as we stay married, he has a chance to forgive me. If we divorce, we can both get married again if someone wants us. But we will never. We can't marry each other again. Well, I think it's over, the woman said. You got away with it again, Jean. Give me your keys. I came by taxi. But we live in the city, he howled. It's a suburb. It's a ten or twelve mile walk. And with this thing on my love cannon, it's going to be pretty hard going. Jin threw the keys to her so quickly that it seemed as if his life depended on it. What do you mean he got away with it again? I asked. He's done this before, she said. That's why I have a lot of these toys in the attic. If it weren't for our children, I would divorce him on the spot. Last time I made him wear this purity device for six months. This time it will be a year. If he tries to take it off it, it is programmed to take him off. He won't be forced to wear this in prison, right? I asked. He won't go to jail, she said. You won't do anything. You're really mad at her right now, but you'll take her back. You love her too much not to. It's written all over your face. She didn't really do anything that bad. According to the rules, she should have sex with someone outside of marriage. It should be casual so as not to threaten your marriage. She has no feelings for Jin. If you look at her, you can see that the only person she loves is you. Her so much, it's just stupid. You beat up Jin because he called her by her name. God, in a way, Jin did you a favor. At least you know who she was with, and you know he's not a threat to you. How the hell are you going to cope in six months when the ritual comes around again, and she is going to have to go out and have sex with a complete stranger? She picked up her purse and headed towards the door. Jin looked at us with pain written all over his face. Maybe prison wouldn't be so bad, he groaned. He headed to the door and began his long walk home. Six months later, I became a different person. Jean's wife was right. I loved Delphine too much to handle the ritual. And since it was the law, I had to either accept it or we had to break up. I came to appreciate the logic behind it and couldn't fault the fact that it significantly reduced the divorce rate in the country. Also the fact that seeing Delphine with Jean changed me. I did the only thing I could. I ran away, leaving Delphine the house. I settled in Windsor, Ontario. I work remotely. I even work for the same company. If I were still in America, there would be a ritual tonight. Here in Canada, I run my own version. The woman on my bed has a mask that she can't see through. She is chained to the bed and has no idea what will happen to her. She has a gag in her mouth and is completely naked. I walk around the room several times and she turns her head, trying to figure out where I am. I still remember the day before I left America. Someone knocked on my door. I opened it and saw a woman standing there. She was short and very cute. She was younger than me, and although I didn't recognize her features, I felt like I knew her. Tyler Stevens, she asked. Yeah, I said. She handed me the tag that I had given at the last ritual. You gave it to me, she said. How are you? I started. Tracked you, she smiled. I told you that it would be especially bad if I didn't participate in the ritual, remember? I nodded. Because I work in the department that enforces the rules, it was easy to identify you with a barcode and... Am I going to jail? I asked. She laughed. Of course not, she replied, laughing. I just came to give it back to you. I want you to give it to me again. But why don't you just keep it? I asked in confusion. Why seek me out and scare me into giving you something you already have? Because this time I don't want you to just give it to me, she smiled. This time I want to earn it. She opened her coat, and underneath it she was naked. 
I thought you've had plenty of time to separate from your wife, and you seem exactly the type of man I was looking for. That was two months ago and marked the beginning of the second phase of my life. She wrapped her long legs around me and kissed me deeply. I love you so much, Ty, she purred. I really enjoyed the way you spanked my ass. But now I want us to take a bath together and then order pizza. After this, I want us made slow, tender love like we always do. Jean's wife was right. I loved Delphine too much to cope with letting she can have sex, even with a random stranger. So I had to, as I said, run away to Canada. I left her the house and as much money as she needed until we worked out all the details. She laughed and told me to just sell the house and she didn't need the money. But how will you survive? I asked her. Same as you, mannequin, she said. I will go with you. Delphine, we, I muttered. Exactly, she said, smiling. We, Tyler, it'll be this way forever. Where you go, I will go. So if you're going somewhere, I'm going too. We'll have to give Heidi a choice. Go or stay, but you and I are together for life. What about your need for? I began. Tyler, I love you more than anything in this world, she said, and I really knew she meant it. In our daily life, you are quite a persistent guy. You're not like that with me in the bedroom because you love me so much. But every now and then, not often, maybe a couple times a year, you could just, you know, just come and get what you want. I mean, you know I'd give it to you anyway, but make me do it. Don't ask me, just take it. We are based in Canada and hold our own version of the right twice a year. We try something new every time, but it's just the two of us. It really helps us spice things up, but honestly, we love each other so much that we don't need much spice. There are things we miss about the us, but in a few months, when we become Canadian citizens, we'll be able to come and go as we please. Detroit is across the river, so we're not that far away. Overall, I think we took the right step, because for us the right was wrong. And subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.